reports that say there's that 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 something hasn't happened are always interesting to me because as we know there are known knowns there are things we know we know we also know there are known unknowns that is to say we know there are some things we do not know but there are also unknown unknowns the ones we don't know we don't know Hey, greetings and salutations. We have the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society. They're going to make a special edition presentation, and we're going to focus on one of the subjects that uh, we deal with about extraterrestrials. You saw the name of the book there. Extraterrestrial, the first sign of intelligent life beyond Earth by Avi Loeb. Now, I just wanted to mention that uh, I am a vol volunteer assistant to the deputy director of special operations, but it's not special operations forces, which most people uh, think when they hear special operations, that's a military term. The special operations f forces, they'll go out and work as a military unit where special operations services, which is uh, slightly different. As a matter of fact, I, I recommend that police departments because the police department uses the word force. The police force, and that has a, a military connotation. In my opinion, I think that there should be a police force and the police services, two separate departments. But that's uh, a political thing that people have to kind of decide if they want to do something like that. But it's not a force. We're not a force here. It's a special operations services. And we, uh, we get together and uh, do a little brainstorming about uh, different things uh, that might be... Uh, applicable to the future. The Special Operations Services, where we delve into all kinds of things, such as ectogenesis, extraterrestrials, you have uh, geothermal, like uh, geothermal energy, uh, which is only a small percentage of the alternative energy thing. Uh, geothermal is uh, something that I recommend, but uh, that's that's something people may want to consider as an alternative to uh, using things like oil and gas. Uh, but we're we're going to be discussing extraterrestrial because uh, I got the book here, so I want to read the uh, uh, the the guy's credentials here. It's right at the beginning here. Let me just. Uh, give you a little bit of the uh, information that he uh, describes for himself. If I can see, I can't really see that well with my glasses, so I'm gonna take my glasses off. At the time of this writing, I serve as chair of Harvard University's Department of Astronomy, founding director of Harvard's Black Hole Initiative, director of the Institute for Theory and Computation within the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, chair of the Breakthrough Starshot Initiative, chair of the Board on Physics and Astronomy of the National Academies, a member of the advisory board for the digital platform Einstein, visualize the impossible from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem and a member of the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology in Washington, D.C. It is my good fortune to work alongside many exceptionally talented scholars and students as we consider some of the universe's most profound questions. So, I just wanted to point out the fact that this guy has a lot of professional credentialism. It's not like uh, somebody that uh, 
uh, might be writing a science fiction book. He tries to base information on facts. And what the thing was about this book is that they had a very unusual sighting in uh, Maui in 2017. They, they had seen something that they've never seen before. Uh, this is uh, some of the uh, introduction here. It says, in, in the pages that follow, I consider the hypothesis that just such an answer was given to humanity on October 19, 2017. I take seriously not just the hypothesis, but also the messages it contains for humanity, the lessons we might glean from it, and some of the consequences that could follow uh, from our acting on or not acting on those lessons. Okay, so he was describing uh, this thing that they saw on the telescopes in Maui in Hawaii, and he, uh, he uses uh, a Hawaiian name for it because it was uh, first uh, sighted in uh, Maui. Oumuamua. It was a special thing that they seen that that they've never seen before. And what uh, when I was reading this book, I kind of liked the idea when he was talking about uh, uh, an, an analogy uh, of the oceans. Now uh, this item could be similar to a seashell that you might find on on a beach that's uh, like a natural thing, or it might be something like a plastic bottle that you find on a beach that was obviously civilization had made the plastic bottle and it was just a, a piece of uh, trash. Or he also used the idea it could be some kind of a buoy, or it could be some kind of a lighthouse for other terrestrials extraterrestrials. So I like that analogy that he was talking about using the ocean as an analogy there. So uh, I think that this book was pretty interesting. I read most of it. I didn't have a chance to read all of it, uh, about three quarters of it. Uh, and I could kind of read you uh, portions of it, but I think that what we're going to be doing is just kind of... Uh, doing our special here. It's the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society with the information presented in this book, Extraterrestrial, The First Sign of Intelligent Life Beyond Earth by Avi Loeb. The guy from Harvard, you know, he made a really good presentation. So, if you don't really believe in extraterrestrials, but you do want to be uh, uh, trying to get uh, a better idea, a uh, scientific idea, this is the book to read here, the extraterrestrial book. That's uh, highly recommended by the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society. I don't know. According to this book, there are... Uh, thousands of uh, uh, planets similar to Earth around stars. I don't know if I can find that section. I was just reading it this morning here. But uh, this guy likes to think of himself as a, uh, well, kind of like an astro uh, uh, archaeologist that this item, this thing that he saw, this Oumuamua thing in uh, Maui that was cited, and they have quite a lot of information on this 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 piece of technology. If it was technology, it could be space junk, like uh, like a plastic bottle in the ocean. We don't really know what it was. It was really you know a very unusual sighting. So. Uh, he actually wrote a whole book on this uh, topic there. So, But uh, uh, he does mention that there are lots of uh, uh, planets in the uh, multiverse that are similar, you know, to the Earth. 
that there's thousands of uh, stars that have a similar similar planets around them. So we're thinking there are other planets that may have some kind of life forms. We don't really know exactly what it is. But we're thinking that this sighting that was in Maui might have been just some kind of uh, space junk floating around and it just happened to come into our sights and then went back off again. Very unusual sighting. I really haven't really kind of figured out myself what this thing might have been, but it might have been uh, a something that was attached to some kind of uh, spacecraft and perhaps uh, the spacecraft disintegrated and this might have been like a, uh, a part of the spacecraft that disintegrated. But it's really kind of hard to say what this thing was because it wasn't really anything that anybody has seen before. Like I said, he actually wrote a whole book on this Oumuamua that they saw in Hawaii here. So he's making all kind of uh, uh, comments about uh, possibilities here. And, and there are lots of possibilities that uh, this, this thing that they saw in uh, Maui uh, for that period of time was of extraterrestrial origins. It says here, there is no field of research where the risk and reward calculations, calculus, where the risk and reward calculus is greater than in the search for extraterrestrial life. What is more, with just 11 days worth of accumulated data gleaned from Oumuamua's passage, we already have more suggestive observable evidence that we than we do for all the fashionable thought bubbles that currently hold sway in the field of astrophysics. Okay, so it's a little bit academic. I mean, he, he does get into some of these academic stuff there, but I'm finding that uh, the information that he presents in this book does uh, uh, give a good... Uh, uh, a view that, you know, we probably have extraterrestrials out in the universe and that he's just trying to find evidence of it. I think that, uh, you know, the extraterrestrials actually have tried to send us messages there uh, and we try to pick up some of the messages that we're thinking that might have come from outer space. I'm sure that uh, these messages might have been sent to us years ago by extraterrestrials because they noted that uh, we have a planet with all kinds of uh, life forms on it. I did read a book in junior high school about the Air Force having Project Blue Book, and they did try to uh, investigate some of these uh, kind of sightings that... Uh, they were trying to investigate. Uh, I think they've had sightings ever since World War II because pilots were flying around and they saw unusual things flying around. They tried to uh, have some kind of uh, explanation that uh, these were weather balloons or uh, some kind of uh, thing like that. I don't really know. Uh, I have a feeling that the government really does not want to be discussing the fact that there might be some extraterrestrials amongst us. But, you know, you hear about unusual finds all the time because I listen to National Public Radio all the time. I listen to a lot of the information that they, they give, and that's actually where I heard about this book they were discussing uh, with the author, uh, about this book here, and that's why I got, I went out and bought the book there because I thought it sounded pretty interesting. Oh, like we said, the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society, we do like to be talking about the future, and there was this thing I heard on the news about this new uh, uh, boat that they have 
it's one of those things like they were trying to have these uh, cars that are uh, driverless cars that uh, use artificial intelligence. Well, they had this boat. I guess they call it the, the Mayflower 2 or something. That There's nobody on board. It, it was only going with artificial intelligence. So it's a lot easier to use artificial intelligence in trying to uh, send something uh, somewhere on an ocean as opposed to on land because uh, it might be a lot more easier to uh, manipulate uh, the ocean waters than trying to deal with uh, uh, people driving around on Earth there. Now, uh, the driverless cars, that was one thing uh, perhaps uh, we may want to be trying to do more of. I guess uh, uh, Toyota might be taking over uh, one of the uh, uh, things. Uber probably got rid of their, uh, their driverless car program, and I think it was Uber giving it to, or selling it to Toyota. So Toyota's probably going to start having those kind of vehicles. There are some of these vehicles out now because I heard that the the post office does have a driverless big rig that drives. I think it uh, goes from uh, uh, Austin, uh, somewhere in Texas, to Phoenix. It, uh, it's a driverless big rig, but they probably go on a highway that's not really like a highway that has a lot of vehicles on there, but they do have driverless vehicles, and I'm sure that the extraterrestrials may have driverless spaceships that they may not have actually any kind of uh, 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 thing, uh, living thing on the thing. They may just be having these... Uh, spaceships that are, are run by robots or something and they send them out into the universe so we may have robot type of uh, uh, extraterrestrials they're not actually uh, humanoid type of uh, extraterrestrials there have been sightings of so-called ufos like i said there was project blue book and they tried to uh, investigate some of these sightings, but the most unusual sighting was this uh, sighting that I mentioned in Hawaii that they had this Oumuamua sighting. They don't really know exactly what it was. There's some pictures. It might be like some kind of space junk or something. So this might have been some kind of trash from some kind of ancient civilization that it just happened to be flying around through our area that we could sight, but it seemed to be pretty unusual. It was the most unusual sighting ever that they ever had. So we think that uh, extraterrestrials could come in many forms. I think the most likely form would be a robot that might, might be sent from another area of the universe over here and the robot may have some kind of uh, humanistic type of characteristics, but uh, they may not actually have uh, a living thing on these spaceships. I think that it's just probes like we sent to Mars. We sent a thing over to Mars, and uh, that was something that we, we did. So if we did it, you know, I'm sure that other other cultures around the universe probably are doing the same thing. They said, well, let's send a probe over to Earth. Maybe this Oumuamua was some kind of uh, probe that was uh, sent. Like I said, it could have been some kind of a buoy or something. When we uh, talk about extraterrestrials, there's always been uh, ideas that there might be have been extraterrestrials, but we don't have really proof of that. So I'm going to be asking uh, our extraterrestrial friend here some questions. Four, three, two, one.
cellular computers now have primary control. So, hello there, Mr. Extraterrestrial. Should we call you Mr. X? Maybe call you Mr. X there. Well, Mr. X, we're glad that you're showing up over here on camera. I think that you have some special... Uh, uh, equipment that you can send messages to Earth. We happen to have some of the equipment here handy with the special operations here. We're going to be picking up some of your signals here. So I'm going to be asking you some questions. Uh, now, one of the questions uh, uh, I've been thinking about, because we all know that uh, the, the planet did have dinosaurs at one time, and the dinosaurs just kind of disappeared, you know, like, uh, so uh, I'm thinking perhaps uh, the dinosaurs uh, have become extinct due to some kind of extraterrestrial influences? You think that there was some kind of extraterrestrial influence, perhaps something like a virus, you think might have killed off the dinosaurs? What do you think about that? I think that uh, the dinosaurs became extinct because there was something that happened and they all died off. But we know that there were dinosaurs here, but we don't really know all the details because that was such a long time ago. Now, that was just one example, the dinosaurs here. So uh, there's other questions that uh, we've been thinking about. Uh, and this is the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society. Yeah, we get together and we'll uh, talk about some of these things. Now, uh, one of the other items that we were uh, discussing, thinking about extraterrestrials, we thought that in the pyramids now in Egypt, now obviously we think that uh, extraterrestrials had... Uh, a hand in building these big pyramids. You know, I think that um, extraterrestrials might have set like a foundation and set up the things and these people might have helped the extraterrestrials build the pyramids, but we don't know for sure. It's kind of like one of those questions that we really don't know how they built these pyramids. I think we had help from extraterrestrials, if you ask me. Now, there's other questions that we have about uh, strange th uh, things. Well, what do you think about that? You think the, uh, uh, the extraterrestrials helped with the uh, pyramids? Um, I'm sure that you probably have an opinion about that, but uh, you probably weren't around at the time. But uh, there's other uh, things that we're questioning. Uh, one of the things is uh, uh, the Bible now. The Bible has a book of revelation, and it seems like uh, we like to use a crystal, and a crystal would go positive on every chapter of the Bible except the book of revelation. 
Now, uh, we have a theory that the book of Revelation was actually written by an extraterrestrial. It wasn't written by a human. Is that something that you think might have happened? But I'm thinking that perhaps the book of Revelation was not written by a human, but by an extraterrestrial or extraterrestrial influences. I don't know what you think about that. That's another example. Now we have other examples of uh, extraterrestrial things. Uh, uh, you'll, you'll hear about uh, unusual things like these crop uh, uh, circles that uh, it looks like somebody's making signals to extraterrestrials. You might have probably had something to do with that, that uh, perhaps there are some extraterrestrials amongst us. We're not really quite sure what the story is about that. So oh, we're going to be asking you some other questions here that we're thinking that, uh, you know, there's extraterrestrials amongst us. Now, is this fact or fiction? What do you think? Fact or fiction? How would you explain the Bermuda Triangle? Now, the Bermuda Triangle, there's a lot of things that seem to happen over at the Bermuda Triangle that they can't really explain. I heard that there was even an ocean liner that uh, was found. This is, somebody told me, I, I don't have the facts on the, on the thing, but there was an ocean liner that they found in a Bermuda Triangle. There's nobody on, on the boat or the ship. There's nobody there. Empty, it was just an ocean liner floating around there. This is what I was told by somebody. I didn't read about it or have heard anything about it, but there are stories about the Bermuda Triangle. Say they may be located in the Bermuda Triangle, possibly underwater, that there might be some kind of underwater extraterrestrials. Don't really know for sure. They may have some kind of influence on what goes on in that area there, but that's just a conjecture. They, they're trying to have proof. They said, well, you know, prove that there was an extraterrestrial influence. Well, we'd actually have to go down there and investigate the Bermuda Triangle and go see if we could find some kind of unusual thing there. because uh, the Earth has quite a lot of uh, living organisms, and uh, when we think of an extraterrestrial, it might not necessarily be a humanoid type of uh, extraterrestrial. The extraterrestrial influences here that, uh, that I've mentioned, I think they're, uh, they're uh, just signs of uh, things that we have had that the extraterrestrials have left to show signs that they've been here. Now, uh, you may see some kind of unusual thing that uh, I have a feeling that it might have had an influence from an extraterrestrial. You, uh, you, you hear about some of these uh, unusual things that... Uh, that occurs, uh, like I listen to uh, National Public Radio, they're talking about some kind of sturgeon that they f found, a great big huge fish that was a great big huge thing. That might have been uh, something that was manipulated by an extraterrestrial. I mean, who knows what's going to be, you know, uh, going to be happening when you have extraterrestrials trying to can control what happens in the world. The extraterrestrials, they may not want to have their sightings, but the sightings are just uh, 
something that uh, they try to keep to a minimum. So uh, one of the big questions nowadays uh, is this COVID-19 virus. Now, we have a suspicion that the COVID-19 virus was actually extraterrestrial origins. This was actually mentioned on a radio show, a local radio show, uh, a Hampshire College professor did mention that, that it may be of extraterrestrial origins. Most people say, well, it came from bats. Well, where did the bats come from? Uh, perhaps uh, bats were maybe picked up by extraterrestrials and they got the virus on the bats. So the bats might have ca caught the virus from extraterrestrials, but now, this is our conjecture. We can't really prove this. Everybody claims, well, COVID-19 came from bats. Well, we've had bats for thousands of years. All of a sudden, we got a, a pandemic. All of a sudden, from bats that have been around for thousands of years? Yeah, I, I, I don't really believe that. I think that there was some kind of influence so that's one of the ideas that we're thinking of, that the COVID-19 was actually of extraterrestrial origins. Are you going to be agreeing with that, or you don't want to say anything about it? My suspicion is that this so-called bat that caused the coronavirus, in my opinion, it might have been something that might have been either caught or uh, developed by an extraterrestrial. So the extraterrestrials are kind of working their way into our existence here, trying to uh, do this virus thing. Because I, I think that if you say that that's probably true, you're going to probably have to be apologizing to the world that the extraterrestrials have caused this pandemic and thousands of people have died all over the world because of some, some extraterrestrial influence. Well, you know, I think that that's not a really good thing there, but... Of course, you did get rid of the dinosaurs, so maybe uh, uh, the humans might be next on the list. Who knows what's going to be happening? Maybe you're planning on having uh, some other types of uh, creatures come to the earth. This coronavirus thing, I have a feeling that the extraterrestrials do have some kind of uh, uh, devices like uh, ectogenesis that they can control uh, the creation of life so they could create new variants. So the extraterrestrials may actually be creating variants uh, uh, with their sophisticated equipment because ectogenesis is the uh, concept of uh, developing life, not through normal means, uh, artificial means. And this is one of the things that our group discusses, ectogenesis. I think that uh, that's one of the uh, things that uh, is a futuristic type of thing that uh, we may be having that, but I'm pretty sure that ex uh, Ectogenesis is already developed by uh, advanced civilizations, and they may be able to manipulate viruses. So that's, that's a theory that I think that uh, should be considered, that uh, we might have a variance not because 
they change all the time. Oh, oh, the viruses, they change all the time. They, they have variants all the time. Oh, I think that the extraterrestrials are doing something about that, in my opinion, that they're doing some kind of manipulation through ectogenetic manipulation. Now, that's just a theory. We can't prove all these kind of things there. But, you know, what do you think? You think that all these things are just a coincidence? I don't think there's no such thing as a coincidence. There's no such thing as a coincidence. These things that happen to us, it's not really a coincidence. I've noticed that many times myself, that these things that happen to me, I don't really consider it to be a coincidence. But there's also... Uh, some other influences besides uh, extraterrestrials, there's uh, the spirit world that may also have some kind of influence there. But the extraterrestrials may have a connection to the uh, spirit world. They may be able to contact spirits, and the spirits may be having some kind of... Uh, uh, kind of a cooperative uh, adventure with the extraterrestrials because I feel that a lot of times people may actually become an extraterrestrial after they die. They may die and a spirit goes off into space and the spirit may go to another universe and become an extraterrestrial. So that's another kind of oddball concept that the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society actually discusses. These are ideas that, you know, we can't really prove. So I'm, I'm not going to be saying that this guy, because he's a Harvard guy, he's going to deny all this stuff. He says, well, you know, I only wrote about this one sighting here. I don't believe in all this other stuff that, you know, you're talking about, that there's, uh, you know, the virus came from extraterrestrials. In my opinion, they did. And according to a Hampshire College professor, I, I don't really remember his name. He was on the radio, though. He was on the radio talk show. He was talking about the virus having an extraterrestrial origin. Just because he says that there might be some kind of extraterrestrials, most people are going to be saying, oh, that's fake news. You know, I'm sure that people are going to be denying the fact that, you know, there's going to be extraterrestrials amongst us. I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of people that won't really agree with this concept that, uh, you know, there's probably extraterrestrials amongst us. In my opinion, you know, the coronavirus was an extraterrestrial origin and that the extraterrestrials are manipulating the, uh, uh, the, the, the genes of the virus uh, with their technology and making variants. That's my personal opinion. But, you know, <clears throat> people are saying, oh, that's really off the wall, you know. Well... There's a lot of stuff that uh, have been mentioned in the past that's off the wall, but then they they found out later on that actually, you know, some of these things have come to fruition, that, that things are actually now things that uh, people had thought about in the past that they said, well, you know, we might be able to go to the moon or something. Well, we already did that some years ago, and now we're on Mars, so I'm sure that we're going to be uh, checking out other planets. But uh, this is only within our own solar system. I'm sure that these extraterrestrials that have sent their robot ships over here, they probably have some kind of... Uh, connection to some of the planets in our solar system there. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's uh, things like uh, uh, an extraterrestrial type of uh, uh, setup 
on one of these planets. It could possibly be somewhere like on the dark side of the moon. Uh, could be some kind of extraterrestrial sighting or set up. I'm sure that the extraterrestrials can probably uh, do just about anything that they want. And these are the intelligent extraterrestrials. There might be uh, some other extraterrestrials that might not be, uh, you know, able to uh, cooperate very well, and they might want to try to do their own thing. But who knows what's going to be happening, you know? Like the extraterrestrials, you know, Orson Welles had that, that thing there got everybody all scared there. What was it, 1939 or something when he had the radio broadcast uh, and everybody was freaking out. Uh, we have so many sources of, uh, of information now that even if it's on uh, uh, one of the news networks that were being invaded or something, I'm sure that people will just ignore it. They won't probably even pay attention to it. You see what happened with the virus here. A lot of people are denying the virus. Like in India, they were <coughs> having uh, uh, rallies, political rallies and everything, and all of a sudden now there's thousands of people dying every day in India there, and now uh, they're suffering the consequences of uh, some of that uh, denial. So... People are saying, well, the virus is all done with now. It's not going to be a problem. I think that you're mistaken because the virus is now having variants, and the variants may not actually even be something that your vaccine is going to be able to save you from. You might get vaccinated, and uh, who knows, it might be one of these super variants that the vaccine's not going to be able to do anything about. Uh, we don't really want to be scaring people, but uh, the, the fact is that uh, these variants have uh, uh, <clears throat> things that are not going to be compatible with a vaccine there. vaccine might, might be uh, something that you can use for certain of the coronaviruses, but not for new ones that might be coming out in the future, so we're most likely going to have to have some kind of vac vaccination every year, like a flu shot. You might have to go in and get your, your coronavirus vaccine there, and, uh, you know, if you have your vaccine, say, in uh, June of 2021, you'll have to go back to uh, June of 2022 and get another vaccination, or possibly you might have to go in six months because these variants are kind of becoming more and more <clears throat> more and more uh, uh, out there so that people are finding more and more variants there. It's, uh, it's kind of an extraterrestrial kind of a plan, in my opinion. I, I hear stuff even on the Internet, although you can't really trust the Internet. You know, the Internet, it's like a party line, you know, like you had uh, years ago that you could kind of listen in to other people there. But, you know, I'm a little concerned about the idea that, that you know, you have your phone and you'll be making phone calls and uh, just think of this, you know, Trump was making phone calls and how many people were listening in on his phone call, you know, that he'd be making phone calls and discussing things and people wanted to uh, do something about it because they didn't like what he was doing on the phone. Well, you know, if they're kind of listening in on the president of the United States, I'm sure that they'll be listening to other people. So when you make a phone call, who knows who's listening? You may have the local police because now they have the technology to pick up signals there. Uh, you have the American government, not only the American government, but the Chinese government, the Russian government, probably uh, some of our enemies, the Iranians, the Iraqis, they probably have all these people listening in on your phone calls. How many people do you want listening to your phone call? Huh? 
you know, you be making a phone call, you think that you're just talking to somebody and then you're talking to a whole pile of people talking on the phone. They, who knows what's going to be happening? Maybe you'll be making a phone call talking about extraterrestrials, and the Chinese might be sending some one of their uh, uh, agents over to your house and try to see what kind of information that you have because the Chinese have a reputation for you know picking up a lot of the information from the United States. So uh, Chinese, I'm a little concerned about the Russians. You know, there's all these things happening. The internet, I'm not quite sure about the internet. The internet probably being monitored by extraterrestrials. And they had the, the people going over to China to investigate. And I have a feeling that the Chinese may have had a sighting of some kind of UFO just before uh, these, uh, this uh, coronavirus showed up in China there. I think, if I remember right, there was some kind of sighting in China at that time when uh, the virus was first detected, and it might have been uh, uh, some kind of extraterrestrial Sighting, and the Chinese government certainly not going to be saying anything about it. They might have investigated it themselves, but you know these uh, these governments really don't want to be uh, giving information to the general population because they feel that they want to keep this stuff as a uh, secret stuff that they don't want to be discussing. You know, they got this uh, Area Fifty One over there over there in the desert there. Nobody can go see that area. <clears throat> I think the government is just trying to keep, uh, keep people from uh, getting the uh, real information about what actually happens in, uh, in the world there because they, they don't want to be telling people that these things going on, like the coronavirus. They said, well, the coronavirus, uh, we don't really believe that there's a virus. Uh, we think that there's something else. But, you know, everybody knows that there is a virus that it killed thousands of people, but some people are coronavirus deniers. They say, oh, well, there's no such thing as coronavirus. I think that it's all bogus. It's all fake news. So, like I said, everybody has their own personal opinions about these things. So I wouldn't be surprised if the extraterrestrials are picking up information as well as these uh, governments around the world. So, if you think of it in those kind of terms, that the uh, extraterrestrials are actually amongst us and are trying to influence things amongst us, well, that's the same as the Chinese and the Russians and everything. You know, they try to uh, influence what goes on. Some people can, can be controlled, some people can't. So uh, the United States tries to resist being controlled by uh, some of these other uh, 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 countries. Uh, Trump was really anti-China in a lot of ways. He didn't really want to be dealing with the Chinese, but I guess, you know, being president, he had to kind of uh, show that he is going to try to uh, uh, work with them, but in my opinion, he really didn't really want to deal with the Chinese. The Chinese were a little bit uh, difficult to deal with. Well, you know, the Chinese, they're, they're really getting into uh, all kinds of stuff, including space. So that's just one of the realms that they're getting into. I just heard on the news today that they have the super-duper aircraft carrier that they're sending over there uh, in the disputed waters over there that they're trying to uh, show that they're really, you know, like the superpower with their uh, super aircraft carriers, so, you know, China's really trying to impose themselves on others. I don't know if they can impose themselves on the extraterrestrials. Maybe the extraterrestrials are just kind of laughing about the whole situation that happens here on Earth, that they see that everybody's kind of fighting with each other, you know.
uh, everybody has a certain ideas about what they want to be doing, and uh, uh, you're not going to always have agreements there. Uh, the UN, they try to have agreements about uh, how to deal with certain situations, but uh, they can't really control, you know, like China and Russia. China and Russia has their own ideas about what they want to do and what they want to get accomplished, and they try to have their influences on other countries. China has their uh, programs that they send uh, help to uh, other countries so that, you know, they'll help them build trains and stuff like that so that these countries would be more interested and being friendly with China as opposed to being friendly with the United States because the United States aren't giving them help, so they want to be friendly with a country like China that's providing them with help, maybe building trains or transportation systems, whatever they need in the country, especially some of these uh, third world countries. They're, they're ready to take the uh, Chinese influences we're trying to save the planet. I don't know if the planet can be saved because you need 100% participation from all the countries in the world and not just these big countries that are trying to do, you know, like we're going to try to save the planet. You know, you have to have 100% participation. And there's uh, some countries that are probably not particularly interested in conforming to some of these standards and practices. But there's other, other things that are going to be destroying the planet. You know, the planet is uh, kind of getting overheated because geothermal is a, a good way to be developing energy that uh, countries can be using and that's an alternative form. It's an alternative to nuclear, solar, wind power. And uh, they said that, you know, you could have a hurricane and kind of destroy solar and destroy uh, uh, the wind power, but you're not going to be able to destroy the geothermal energy. And that's something that goes underground and they get the energy from underground. So these are uh, ideas that I think might be uh, futuristic, that the geothermal may start to take over. Uh, and geothermal, I, I would personally, I would like to have geothermal at my house. I, I think that would probably be the best alternative energy sur source ever. Uh, somebody mentioned to me it might cost like $20,000 or something to... Uh, uh, drill and develop uh, 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 some kind of geothermal uh, home home thing. And if you have lots of money, that pro probably would be a good way to, uh, to, to heat your uh, home. But that is quite a lot of money to uh, spend uh, for, uh, for an alternative form of uh, heat. Most people are probably going to uh, try to go with solar or one of these other uh, alternative energy sources because geothermal is a little bit too expensive. But I think geothermal is going to be the way to go. And who knows, uh, geothermal may become the main way of doing heat in the future. Uh, it sounds to me a little bit like these... Uh, uh, landlords, they want to get rid of some of these people that uh, uh, they're having trouble paying rent, so they want to get somebody, you know, they want to get some people out so they get other people in that are willing to pay rent. Well, I think the extraterrestrials want to get rid of the humans so that they can come and take over, you know, like uh, you, you hear about some of these uh, tactics that uh, humans use, like uh, they mentioned about Compton, California, that uh, uh, they were saying that, uh, oh, you better sell us uh, your property there. It looks like they're going to be going downhill there, and they, they sold the property fairly cheap, 
and then they'd, uh, they'd sell them at high prices, so it was some kind of like a scammy thing that they were doing there to try to get the properties there. I don't really uh, trust some of these uh, capitalists that uh, they'll uh, have some kind of schemes. Uh, I myself had some kind of problem there with uh, uh, my mortgage company that they were claiming I didn't make payments and uh, I got, you know, a mortgage statement that said, unpaid, 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 unpaid. I said, what are you talking about? I got these checks from the bank here show that you cash these checks. What's going on here? So I had to be filing a complaint with the state of Massachusetts uh, as well as uh, uh, the federal government, the Federal Reserve. I gave them all the information. And what happens to the mortgage company? They file for bankruptcy. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. We thought that we might be able to get some property here, but we didn't think that they were going to be complaining to the federal government. So now the mortgage company had to file for bankruptcy. Uh, what kind of joke is that? Well, you know, some of these greedy capitalists, they do try to uh, take advantage of uh, people, especially low-income people like myself. You know, I'm not really that rich. You know, I wish I was rich, but, you know, it's not one of those things that's going to be happening, especially at my age, unless I uh, try to uh, contact an extraterrestrial, and then maybe if I contact an extraterrestrial, I might be able to get rich. So what do you think? Maybe you want to make your appearance over here, and then I'll, I'll have it. It'll be like, uh, like they did there in the circus there back 100 years ago or something. Uh, they have some kind of special thing, and then people would go and see it there. I, I, I don't know. You can make money doing just about anything in this day and age. You could say that there's extraterrestrials here. We'll sell you a pet extraterrestrial and uh, send us your, uh, your down payment there. It'll be like a down payment on a house. You'll have your own pet extraterrestrial. How does that sound for a, a money-making gimmick there? You know, extraterrestrials, you better be careful, you know, because these humans, all they're thinking about is making money all the time. They want to be making money, and they will take advantage of just about anybody, even extraterrestrials. So you better be careful about what you do here on planet Earth, because if you come over to planet Earth, you might get sold. They might consider you as some kind of uh, special thing that's worth a lot of money. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that, you know, if some extraterrestrial does show up, that the people are going to be trying to get a hold of the extraterrestrial. Just... Just remember, Extraterrestrial by Avi Loeb. He wrote about it, about the first sign of intelligent life beyond Earth. He wrote about it, and he's a Harvard guy. Like, uh, like he mentioned that uh, ocean analogy, that the, uh, the sighting there it could be space junk like a plastic bottle or it could be a buoy, it could be like a lighthouse to be giving people some kind of information that uh, coming over to this area here of uh, planets and they said, well, you know, this is something that you need to stay away from. We don't really need to deal with uh, these, these types of... Uh, things that are running planet Earth because uh, humanoids, they seem to be having too many problems. They can't seem to get their act together. Well, uh, everybody's brain is as individual as their faces, so like a lot of times you might think that people are going to be cooperating, but there's no such thing as a total 100% cooperation. There'll never be 100% cooperation. But, you know, you can't control the world. There's always going to be uh, uh, somebody that's going to be trying to do something on their own. They could be doing something in secret, you know. 
And, uh, you know, who knows what's going to be happening there. They had the atomic bomb there. It was supposed to be a secret. How many countries now have uh, atomic weapons there? It was supposed to be secret. Oh, it was supposed to be secret, but now everybody's got the stupid atomic weapons. I like the idea that, you know, they're going to be uh, using uh, these uh, dirty bombs that they want to keep the buildings, but they want to destroy the people, the living items there. They're not going to destroy the buildings there. So oh, what is this? Like they want to be having the buildings available for extraterrestrials? Like they're going to be coming. They said all the people are dead now. You know, they got nuke nuked. And uh, the buildings are still there, so we're going to send all these extraterrestrials now over to planet Earth because they, they already got their buildings all set up for the extraterrestrials. We need to find out if the extraterrestrials are manipulating the virus and sending it to the, uh, uh, to the world population and get it, getting rid, rid of the people there on the earth, just like they did with the dinosaurs. So, Mr. X, I'm sure that you're agreeing with me, Mr. X, whoever you are, you're there showing yourself I think that you may have some kind of secrets that you might want to be telling the rest of the world, but I know that you're not going to be discussing it right now, so we're going to kind of leave it at that. And I'm going to let you go here because uh, I'm kind of running out of time. You know, I gotta get the hell out of here. We might get an invasion from an extraterrestrial. I think we need to get the hell out of here. We need to grab our guns and run out somewhere, get some uh, some weapons there because we might be having an invasion any minute now from the extraterrestrials. They're gonna be coming over here. They're gonna be attacking us. We better be prepared. I think the extraterrestrials planned this, just like they did with the dinosaurs. They, they came over here. They didn't like those dinosaurs. I think the dinosaurs were a nuisance. They said, we're going to get rid of those dinosaurs, and they got rid of them probably using a virus. So the dinosaurs all died, so they were probably saying, oh, these humanoids, they're a nuisance. We want to get rid of them, and we want to take over their buildings. So, uh, so who knows what's going to be happening in the next hundred years or something. We might be having some humans, some extraterrestrials. They might want to be selling their property to extraterrestrials and tell the humans that they have to be leaving. It's time for you to take a hike, Mr. Human, because the extraterrestrials are going to come over and take over your house because we don't want those humans around here. So, you know, you better be careful what you say about the extraterrestrials. They might get mad and they might cause trouble for you. You know, just like these uh, mortgage companies, they might try to get you out. They might want to try to do foreclosures. They might want to do stuff there. Well, the, these extraterrestrials, these extraterrestrials, they're probably going to be trying the same kind of tactics because we're humans and we're more susceptible to uh, all these things that go on in the world trying to get rid of people so that the other people can take over. Well, 
you know, we're not going to be uh, putting up with that. I think that the, the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society this time to get themselves ready in case we get an invasion by, by extraterrestrials. They like to call themselves preppers, getting ready for the invasion of the extraterrestrials. They want to be storing up their guns and stuff. So, you know, people are saying, oh, we can't have these guns around here because they're going to be using the guns on other humans. Well, what if you're going to be attacked by an extraterrestrial? Do you want to be trying to use something like a bow and arrow or something? I mean, like, get real, man. You probably need to have some kind of weapons to fight these extraterrestrials. They're probably che checking us out right now, probably listening into our phones, probably coming around here uh, uh, trying to see what they can do to get rid of these humans there, trying to take over the buildings there. Who knows what's going to happen there? Well, I'm, I'm kind of disgusted about the whole situation, in my opinion, that this is something that we need to be taken care of right here and now. And like I said, I'm a volunteer assistant to the deputy director of Special Operations Services. The Special Operations Services, where we delve into all kinds of things. Extraterrestrials, you have uh, geothermal, you have all these uh, unusual things that uh, people may not necessarily know about such as ectogenesis. I'm sure that uh, the countries, once they find out that, uh, you know, somebody might be experimenting like the Nazis did, they're going to get all bent out of shape and they said, no, we're not going to be allowing this kind of stuff to go on. But, you know, you can't control the world. There's always going to be... Uh, uh, somebody that's going to be trying to do something on their own. They could be doing something in secret. But I think that uh, we're going to finish up here now saying that with the information presented in this book, Extraterrestrial, The First Sign of Intelligent Life Beyond Earth by Avi Loeb, the guy from Harvard, you know, he made a really good presentation. So if you don't really believe in extraterrestrials, but you do want to be uh, uh, trying to get uh, a better idea, a scientific idea, this is the book to read here, the extraterrestrial book. That's uh, highly recommended by the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society. I'm going to look in the back here because uh, he does uh, kind of repeat his uh, credentials here. This is what it says here. Abraham Avi Loeb is the Frank B. Baird Jr. Professor of Science at Harvard University, where he was the longest serving chair in the history of the astronomy department from 2011 to 2020, and where he directs the Black Hole Initiative and the Institute for Theory and Computation, a member of the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology, as well as the advisory board for the educational platform, Einstein visualized the impossible. He also chairs the advisory committee for the Breakthrough Starshot Initiative and the Board on Physics and Astronomy on the National Ac Academies and serves as the science theory director for all the initiatives of the Breakthrough Prize Foundation, the author of five books and 800 scientific papers. Loeb is an elected fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, the the American Physical Society and the International Academy of Astronomics. In 2012, Time selected Loeb as one of the 25 most influential people in space.
He lives near Boston, Massachusetts. Yes, Boston, Massachusetts, where a lot of Harvard people live. So we know I have an accent, and they say that I like to park my car in Harvard Yard. Well, do I have a Boston accent or what? I mean, I probably sound like I'm from Boston. I'm not actually from Boston, but I have a little bit of a Boston accent. They said, oh, you sound like you're from Boston. Going to park your car in Harvard Yard. I said, well, who wants to park their car in Harvard Yard? You might get a $200 ticket or something. So I'm not planning on doing anything like that. I'm sure that some extraterrestrial bit will be looking to go over in Harvard Yard and try to do something over there. But who knows if that's going to be happening. You know, they want to kind of stay somewhere like the Bermuda Triangle and just kind of listen to all our little phone calls there. Okay, Mr. Extraterrestrial, we hope that you don't bother us. So I'm going to leave you right now and say, have a good day and a good night. <laughs>